Good evening, YouTube, and welcome to another episode of Cookie RC. Well, um, it's nighttime over here where I'm at, and I had to go to work today, so there is no speed runs, there is no running content um, until the weekend, if I can, because I think I have to work this weekend. But anyways, let's get straight to it. As you can see in front of you, you have three vehicles, two, one, four, four, zero, zero, one, and a one, two, four, zero, one, nine. Now, and th this is more of like a tutorial slash instructional video, maybe a tip pointer and some products that I've got along the way to either make things better, enhance the performance of the cars. And it's been a lot of tinkering and it's a little bit, a lot of headaches, but we're getting there. And um, I've learned a lot of lessons through working with these cars. And getting back into the RC. And let's get straight into it. So on the left over here, you have a fully upgraded metal uh, 144001, which most of these metal components are going to come off. Um, I just don't like how they work. It just gives way too much weight. Um, we'll talk about more about that particular car and its setup because I'm going to talk about each and every one of them. This car was built based on all the spare parts that I had left off of this one. And by the time I did inventory of all the parts I had, I said, well, if I buy a chassis and just a few more parts, I'm good. I have another car. So that's how, how this one came to be born. And then, of course, just recently, um, I got the 124019, which I also have on order, the 104 zero zero one which now it has an update of or estimated time of arrival of the end of march so we'll see how that goes i have nothing planned for that car yet um it will get upgraded to bar brushless uh, it just um, it's just a matter of what setup i'm going to use depending on what components and how the car looks and the space that i'll have with it based on what i've learned with these three all right, so let's put these two aside and let's talk about this car right here. All right, so this car right here was the first custom build that I did. Um, the paint job is custom. The paint, you know, like the, everything is customized pretty much. Um, did all full metal upgrades. Uh, this is the Fat Bodies Turbo Body that I had installed on it, uh, custom painted. Um, for my first paint job, it wasn't too bad. I got a uh, uh, magnetic body post, which they work really well. It's never fallen off during running unless it tumbles. And even then, it sticks pretty well. Um, so let's talk about what it has because every car has something a little bit different along the way. And I have upgraded a certain amount of components depending on what I think is going to work best, which, you know, I'm no expert, but here we go. So it's got a lot of customizations. As you can see, the battery strap is totally custom. It works fairly well. I just need smaller strap to work it the way that I have it set up because these straps are a little bit too long for the batteries that I own. Every single one of my vehicles is running off of the Dumbo RC and their X6 FG receivers. And each and every one of these cars binds to one remote i'll probably do an instructional video on that later okay so great and straight into it it's got all metal upgrade parts um i didn't like the link rods in metal okay i didn't like them at all too shaky too wobbly the metal parts as soon as you start crashing it starts bowing out the holes in, in certain parts it's too rigid it breaks a lot of parts when you crash so i'm going away from the metal except for the second floor it's going to stay there I did do some upgrades on the uh, steering assembly. It's metal. And I like that. It works fairly well. But eventually this car is going to have all plastic parts except for the parts that I have just mentioned. It's going to have all the link rods in plastic. I'm going back to plastic um, uh, drive uh, uh, differential cases. They're way too heavy. Um, going back to, um, I said link rods. Um, but that's about it. I mean, pretty much everything metal is going to go away, um, except for maybe the hubs that hold the wheel. Those seem to be 
pretty spot on for now. So we'll see how that goes. But as you can see, all the metal parts make a lot of wobbling. So, and I think that's because of crashing too much, or maybe this wheel's too loose. Um, either way, I'm I'm gonna re reassess what I did with this car because this is the first one I built, and, and go from there. But as far as components, uh, with this one, what I did is I bought a set of Chinese, uh, Ghoul RC, pretty much, uh, generic kind of because the motor is ghoul rc it's a 4300 kv motor but this is a generic 120 of supposedly 120 amp psc so far it hasn't let me down this car has a cat packs um this car so far has uh, given me a speed of with the foam tires of 60 uh 66.5 66.5 miles an hour but i think that i can do better with it I'm just tinkering with it and trying to fix a couple of parts that got broke on it. And I just haven't been able to gotten it right. I think that one of my differentials is bad, so I have to open it up and check it. But it hasn't run right since I built it. Um, and and try, I ran it on 2S, and it did run about 50 miles an hour, which w was okay. But it just, after that, when I tried 3S, it, it, it busted a pin on one of the hubs on this wheel right here. And then from there, I lost a uh, dog bone. I don't have the dog bone anymore. I just got some in today, so that'll get fixed. But um, I think there's a problem with one of these differentials, so I got to open it up and see what's up with it to get it. So it's upgraded to Mod 1 gearing. As you can see right there, I have a 29-tooth Mod 1 gear pinion. Um, I have a tutorial video that I did on that. Just go watch it. But it's got. A I had to cut some of the casing on the uh, top assembly. To be able to fit it, I mean, it runs fairly well. It slides pretty well, and um, along with it, I had to do modifications to the motor mount to fit. But it fits now. I had to do some boring inside of the motor mount. I have to cut the side right here to be able to have access. Um, I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, to have access to the to the grub screw. But other than that, that's what I've done. Of course, it's got the JX eleven eighty one MG servo. And I have upgraded everything to a mass branded XT60 connectors. For better or for worse, I decided to go from T plugs to a mass um, XT60 connectors. I just think they're just going to work better for what I'm going to do with these cars. So we'll see how that goes. But so far, I'm, I'm enjoying having the XT60s on there. Um, other than that, that is all I have done to this car. Um, let's move on to the next car and just keep in mind that every car is set up a little bit different wheelbase on this one is just the same stock I've done nothing fancy to it um, I got the girt wing from the fat bodies attack I mean not fat bodies attack but the fat bodies girt wing and I had to pretty much cut this piece on the back side off because this car when it was running on 3s it would tend to wheelie a lot because of the wing even with as low as I could get it um and, of course, the fat body's turbo that goes on this car. But enough for this car, and let's go on to the next one. The next one is another 144001, and this one is considerably lighter because it doesn't have none of the upgraded parts. Of course, you can see that I have this one drooped straight. This little car handles a lot better than the one with the metal upgraded parts, and it's due to the fact that it has the hub extenders now they are a little bit wobbly right now i just have to figure out a way to get them a little more stable i have another video but it runs fine i mean it, it does seem wobbly but when you get this thing running it runs just fine and of course i had the same thing with this car on 3s it will go a little bit crazy on you doing wheelies because of the piece that goes attached to hip to this and I, I have to give credit to um, first person, at least that I saw with the wing cut out like this, was me, him, RC. I watch a lot of his videos and I get a lot of ideas from him. And hopefully in the future he'll get some from me. Who knows? But that's what we are in the RC community. We just kind of take each other's ideas and, and, and suggestions and go from there. But anyways, um, this one right here is stock gearing. Um, but I had to remove the motor because 
I was doing a little bash session outside testing the stability with the extended wheelbase a couple of days ago and I actually burnt the motor. Um, this one was cogging a lot and the, the it was my fault. The reason for the cogging was because I used the 17 pin uh, tooth pinion that comes for the Alpha, the WL Toys Alpha 959 and that pinion I didn't bore it out right. I bored it out to 3.17 which is correct but I hand drilled it and I kind of cockeyed the drill bit into the drill bit as I was doing. I didn't notice it really. And it mounted a little bit wobbly. So I took the chance and still ran it like that. And it ran, but it cogged a lot. On 3S, it wouldn't cog as much. But it was a nightmare trying to get it running on 2S. And there's really not binding right now, obviously, because... Um, there's no motor, but um, I have to replace the spur gear. I don't know if you can see it, and I don't know if you can tell, but the sh the teeth on this spur gear are extremely sharp, and it was because of the bent or the wobbly pinion. Eventually, they grinded each other together, and this uh, has to be replaced. So I have a new motor on order. Originally, I started with this ESC. This ESC is not burnt. This is a 35 amp. Uh, Ghoul RC brushless ESC and it works fairly well it gives the car plenty of power obviously I got on 3s I got it to 55 miles an hour with a 2838 motor Ghoul RC uh, 4500 kV motor that I burnt but um, it just gets too hot and, and instead of installing a fan on this um, uh, I don't know how much the fan is going to help plus it wouldn't fit mounted on the top um I just decided to go away from this. So this is just going to be for probably a smaller car. I'm probably going to install this maybe with a fan. If I ever purchase an Alpha 959, which is a 118 scale, I'll probably go on it with that. So that's enough for this ESC. Um, I have on order, uh, I think it's a Surpass RC 2845 motor, which is a slightly bigger motor, still same diameter, but a slightly longer uh, it will probably provide a little bit more power, but it is a 4370 versus a 43500. Maybe it'll run cooler. Um, I'll, obviously, like I said before, I have on all my uh, WO Toys, uh, JX Servos and the Dumbo RC X6FGs, uh, so I can use the same. as I got. It's got the upgraded metal hub uh, steering, and it works really well. I like it. These are the original stock shocks that originally came with my first W O Toys 144001 original shock towers, and um, pretty much everything on this car is original except for the hubs, the steering assembly, and that's oh, and inside of these are metal upgraded differential cases. So that's an upgrade with the upgraded metal um, components as well. The hardened metal, not the the cast metal or whatever you might call it. So um, this one is a different setup, obviously. It's got the smaller motor to, to limit the weight. Let's see what happens when I install a 2838 motor on it. And it is run. So what I did with this one as well is I uh, modified the tower. Uh, as you can see here, I have a modified tower to fit this. ESC, which I purchased for that 2838 motor, which at the time I was going to use it for the 2838 motor, but since I burnt the motor, now I have to buy a different motor. Ideally, I would have bought the 45 PSC that comes with a Platinum Series Surpass RC 2845 motor, but I had already purchased this for the other motor, so this one's just going to have to do with the 2845 motor that I have coming in this is a custom build what I did is I cut off because these these towers on the top are pretty flimsy on the 144001001 at least the plastic ones are so with some kydex I custom built something to fit this so when it sits on it it'll sit nice and and kind of factory to how it originally was and it sits perfectly on there I mean, as you can see, the modification, I mean, I have the screws in so I don't lose them in, in each of the points here. So I know what screws came from where, so I can't sit it down on it right now. 
but the way it works, it works just like the stock one, and it's beautifully, and it just works really beautiful. I did some custom uh, cutting on it, I did some adjustments to it, and I uh, gorilla taped it on there and used some nuts and bolts and uh, screws to secure it together, and it works really well if it's something to that you're looking into on extending this or maybe putting a bigger ESC on the top tower. It works beautifully. It works great. It just helps that ESC to keep a lower profile. And of course, I'll link a couple of the, of the stuff, of the things that I got in the description so that you know some of these parts where I got them from and how they work. All right, moving along for that car. And that car has been using the stock body, by the way. It, ha it fit on the 35. It might not fit on the 45, and we'll get that in a minute. All right, so... um. Next is this little beast right here. Um, I love how this thing runs. It is absolutely amazing. On 2S, I got it going at, uh, I don't want to lie to you, but I think, yes, 53.9, I think. I think, it, let's keep it low. Let's keep it low. I think it's 53.9 miles an hour on 2S batteries, okay? And it's running on stock body. Of course, like I've done with all my other vehicles, I've upgraded to um, XT60 connectors. I have a battery installed in here. Let me take it out so I can show you something else that I did. Um, XT60 connectors. Um, I, on this one, I have a 4,000 kV hobby wing uh, motor, um, 30, 3652, and a 60 amp hobby wing ESC. It's the... I think it's the Easy Run Max 10. Yes, that's what it is. Of course, as usual, running the X6FG uh, gyro uh, receiver and the JX Servo 1181 um, MG. I love the power button on this. I love the way that the purple looks on this car. It's stock. I've done nothing to it other than replace stock bones that I've lost. I lost a couple of them on some of the speed runs. If you watch my other videos, you'll see that I actually lost... A couple of dog bones and one of the things that i had to do to keep this car running was actually install you can see right there the front cv okay that goes for the steering the front cv the drive train of this car has two cvs on the front and i had an extra cv so i installed the cv in the back and it actually works beautifully and that is really something nice to do if you want to prevent from losing dog bones. So purchase you some of those and do that upgrade to it. And then if this ever flies out, which for some reason it always tends to happen in the rear, then you will not lose your axle because this side is dog bone. This side is CV just so I can keep it running. I got new parts today so I can replace the dog bone if I want to, but I don't think I'm going to. I think that I'm going to take one of those new CVs. And replace this dog bone with a CV, which I actually have on order some upgraded metal CVs that are fatter than this. And I think they're for the 124018 model. I'm not sure, but they're made. The ones that I bought are made supposedly for the 144001, so there'll be an update on that. Um, of course, I got these fat tires, 45 inch contact, I mean 45 millimeters, sorry. Contact tires in the back, 32 millimeter contact tires in the front. I have not been able to get this thing to full throttle on 3S, but I have recorded 64.6 on it, maybe, I don't know, I said it in one of my videos, but other than tires and electronics, this thing is run running purely stock other than this Traxxas Rustler um, wing, okay, that wing right there is is, is aftermarket. And that one, I mentioned it in my prior video, is thanks to Tom Lee RC. He did an upgrade on a 124019, and he used this wing. And it's for the same reason. These wings that these cars come with, um, unless you cut them out, like the one I did with the model before, they tend to make the car wheelie on 3S. So, yeah. But I'm still trying to get this one to full throttle. I'll have more updates on this one. Another thing that I did with this one, and I love this part of it, is that I actually drilled some holes all the way to the back of this chassis to be able to mount right here the bracket that holds the battery in 
further back so I can fit bigger size batteries in it. Um, now, they can't be wider, but they can be longer. So if, if they make batteries like that, I'll find them. And I upgraded to these um, 400 millimeter Apex because once you extend that battery tray, you're going to have to have a longer strap so that you have the reach. And for any type of battery, this is going to be a perfect strap for this car because it, it reaches all the way out or as far back as you need it depending on the battery that you have on there. I purchased a five pack of these. I'll leave a link on the description of where I got these. They're actually the 20 millimeter ones and they actually fit absolutely perfect. The only thing that you have to do with those is you loosen the screws out so it, fit, so it fits. It will fit if you force it in there um, with a screws tighten, but it's just better to let off a couple of turns on each of the screws on each of the mounts and then you will be able to get this in there and it sits flat. There was no customization done to these mounts. They're made a little bit different than the ones on the 144001001 and they actually have the clearance to fit a standard 20 millimeter strap, which is great because it will work better than the stock one. And I will show you that. Here's the stock one compared to the upgraded one. I think this is a 300 millimeter strap this is the upgraded ones that I bought. And these actually, of course, it's a lot thicker because you can see this one, I, I believe, is 12 millimeters. This one is 20 millimeters. And they are considerably, let me see if I can get any kind of camera. All right. There you go. So, crap. No, it's not working. All right. There you go. So they're considerably longer or at least enough to do what they need to do. I love these little straps that I got. They work very good. So, um, and if you have countersinks, it'll work great because you can countersink those holes and it'll be a custom build on your car and the chassis, they will just sit flush on the chassis, which is great. So that's another upgrade that I did on it. Now, um, I'll also give you a description, a link on the description where to get these. These are the kind of uh, a mass XT60 connectors that come with the wire cover. So you don't really have to use heat sink on them. They work great. Um, I will show you where I got those from. Um, so I also have, and, and I'm going to mention somebody else in this video. Um, uh, John Robinson um, gave me this idea. If you watch John Robinson's channel at all, then he took tires and he got it. From somebody so he got it from somebody and I got it from him so I will not take credit but these tires right here they're already glued on so I can't show you how it looks like but go to John Robinson's channel and you'll be able to see what he did he actually took these tires off okay not these particular ones he had a different set but it's the same concept and he turned them inside out and gorilla taped to the width of the tread around the whole tire, turned them back around, glued them on, and did a test. And these tires now, as you see them right now, these tires, as much as you think, look how they're pretty soft. Of course, there's Gorilla Tape in there. They do not balloon. So if that's something that you're interested in doing, go watch his channel and see how he did it. I just followed his tutorial, and it worked amazing. So good that I installed them on the 124019 and I had to change them off because I could, it, I have to put a wheelie bar when I use these tires on it because it wheelies, the car wheelies. There's so much torque on that car that it just wheelies these tires. So you have to ride them on, on loose dirt or something like that. So they actually slide a little bit and don't wheelie off on you. I tried it in grass. It wasn't working for me. It was wheeling way too much, but that is a great upgrade. And these tires are much bigger. So if you're looking for like a, a truggy effect coming off of one of these model vehicles. Look how much bigger those tires are. <coughs> so if you're looking for that, this is the way to go. You'll get the truggy effect if you have a different setup. And then you take off the droop, let it sit higher, and you'll have more of a truggy effect on it if you want to do something like that with one of your 144s or one of your 124s. So that's that. The next thing that I got for you and I'll leave the best for last in my eyes, is this tool set. Um, I'm all about helping people. So I got this tool set from Amazon. And actually, 
It is more, it, it, it's greater than I thought it was going to be. I mean, I haven't put it to stress yet, but I like the tool set. It has for every kind of hex nut that you have on your vehicle, whether it be SAE or metric, pretty much for every type of RC, there's going to be on there something for you. So it's got four millimeter, five millimeter, 5.5 millimeter, seven millimeter, eight millimeter. It's got three sixteenths a quarter, and then on this side it has five sixteenths, eleven thirty seconds, and three eighths. And then this screwdriver right here comes with an assortment of drill bits that you just take this off. It has an O-ring right there, which will eventually wear out, and this won't sit tight on there. But guess what? An O-ring for that you could probably find very easily. This is actually made out of plastic. And the way that it works is you slide these off and they actually have the sizes. Let me at least leave it on there. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but each size for each side is imprinted on each of these shafts. And the way these shafts works, once you take one out, you obviously put this back in so that you don't have the problem of your shafts falling out with time, is that you pull on this and you put it in there and it slides in, all right? And then you can leave it long like that, right? Or you can go as short as that. So, you know, sometimes it's hard to reach places if you're trying to work like that inside of a car and you need a shorter screwdriver. And this one seems to be able to do that job. It has every size of hex that you could possibly imagine. The only thing I wish it had was a number two screwdriver. It, does not it doesn't even have a number one. It has a zero. But I didn't buy this screwdriver to get that. I do have tips that fit in here that has the number one and the number two. So this one doesn't come with it, but I do have that size hex to fit in there from other sets that I do have. So no big deal there. Another thing this set comes with is a whole bunch of wrenches. Um, it's like the huddy wrenches that you can buy off of uh, hobby stores or AliExpress or Banggood. You have a whole bunch of wrenches. You got a 10, an eight, this is a combo one. This is actually a uh, SAE, a quarter, five sixteenths, 11, 30 seconds, three sixteenths. And then you have your four, 5.5, three, seven, six, five, and eight. So it, it's got a very wide uh, variety of sizes on it. And you can purchase this one for about $26. Not too bad for a tool set of this quality and the way that it's built. You can buy it from hobby stores, Amazon. There's a lot of places that have it. All right, so in my eyes, the best for last, I'm trying to keep this under 30 minutes, is the body. So because I installed this ESC on there, I did this custom build. I was trying to keep this one stock body because every car has a different concept, but I, it's not going to fit. So either I cut the top off of this body or I go with a different body. And a very popular body for this car is the Fat Bodies Attack. So I do have a fat bodies attack right here. And I'm not haven't cut out done nothing with it yet. I just got them in today. But here is the it comes with a couple of cool stickers that you can put on your body once it's painted if you so choose to. Here is the fat bodies attack. And obviously, when you're comparing it to this body, it gives you so much more headroom for where the ESC is actually installed. And that's why a lot of people use this body. And I had resisted to not copycat when I got this one because the ESC that I had got was small enough to fit in a turbo. Which the turbo, if you want to do a comparison, also has a little bit more headroom. So it's like gradually incremental. So from, you go from stock to a little bit more and then to a little bit more where the fat bodies attack. So that's just a comparison so you can see what each body does. I like this body. Um... But this one is just going to be a monster. What I'm going to do with it, I don't know yet. I, I know it's going to be a three-color uh, scheme because this is actually the car that I'm building for my son. And he wants it to remain the, with the original look. So I did get him um, two colors, including a black. I was trying to find gunmetal, but I couldn't find gunmetal paint. So um, I try to get as close as I can to this color. And I think I did a good job at picking it. I got this uh, Tamiya uh, poly, uh, polycarbonate paint. That's the paint that's going to go on this car. It's a PS30. And I got a PS8 
to try to match as close as possible the front color of this car because he just likes how the color scheme on this car is. So I'm the black paint isn't in yet, but I'm going to use these two colors with black and do something similar similar to what the color scheme on this is. How that's going to look and how I'm going to do it on the fat body's attack body, I don't know yet, but that's what's coming for it and I'll show you what that looks like when it's done. Now, last but not least, and I want to do a comparison of bodies as well. So in case you have same similar plans or you're thinking of grabbing something like that, it's not that I don't like this body. It fits everything in there. It's kind of tight to close when you put bigger batteries in it. The way I have the car set up, it will close, which is fine. I will use this body, but I want to have something that will give it a different look from time to time without doing any major customizations to the body or the post. So I decided to go with the Fat Body's Hammer. And I got that one right here. The Fat Body's Hammer is so similar to the Fat Body's Attack. It's just a longer version of it. Of course, it came with some stickers too. And this body looks very sm similar. So it smiles at the body, Fat Body's Attack. It's just slightly longer in the back to accommodate for the longer wheelbase that this car has. So that is going to look great on this car. What I'm going to do with it, I don't know yet because I do not have an idea of what colors I'm going to use. I'm going to try to use what I currently have in stock because I already have six colors. There's no sense in buying any more paint. I just got to come up with a good color scheme and a good pattern of how I'm going to do this one. So that's the body that's going to be alternate to the stock body. Not that I'm not going to use the stock body. I'm just going to alternate it every now and then, maybe get a different wing when I use this setup and have a different wing for when I have this set, the, the, the stock body. So I don't know how I'm going to do that yet, but that's what it is. That's what's going on it. Now, the, the if you want to see the difference, at first I thought they had sent me two of the same bodies with two different stickers, but it's not. So if you compare them side by side, they look very similar in the front. They actually are almost the same body, except for when you look at it on the other side. There is your extension that makes it fit on a 112 scale versus on a 114 scale. Okay? I've seen people do um, Beyond RC did a pretty good job of installing a Fat Bodies Attack on, on a 124019, and his looks pretty sick. But, I mean, that, that's his style. That's what he did. But I want to full coverage body on all of my components that's just how i want to roll with it so that's what i'm going to do and i'm going to use the hammer so once again look on the top is the 144001 and on the bottom is the fat bodies hammer body for the 124019 so i'm going to have pretty much twins right they look like twins from the front but they are slightly different from the side and they are slightly different from the rear. But they will look almost the same once they're painted, cut, and installed on the other ones. This one's just going to be a little bit longer. So I'm pretty pleased about that. All in all, that is all I have for you tonight. I will come up with more videos of content to put for you so you can look at it, so you can get your own ideas, so you can get inspired by the things that I'm doing, the th different things that I'm testing and I mean, it's cost me a ton of money to get where I'm at right now with the W old toy series that I'm doing. But all in all, I think it's going to be very f helpful for some people when they're choosing ideas in which direction they want to go. So right there, you have three different ideas going from all metal upgrades, foam tires, stock tires, extended wheelbases, different bodies, different kind of ESCs, different kind of motors. You can choose from watching stuff like this. From uh, cheaper version motors to more higher end motors like on this one to smaller motors like on these. So once these three cars are perfectly running fine, this one's closer than this one. Um, I will show you the speeds of each, how they clock, how they handle, how they manage for each different car variety. And that way you can make decisions on your own on what you think is going to be more suitable for your needs. Anyways, thanks for watching. As usual, please subscribe. Please click on notifications and for uh, leave your comments. Let me know what you think about 
your projects or give me some ideas to improve on my own. As, as usual, thank you very much and y'all have a great evening. See you next time.